Hey, it's Pam. This video has been requested a fair amount and it's taken me a long time to finally get around to doing it. Uh, but now it's ready just in time for my 2500 subscriber milestone. So thank you everyone. Uh, it's my game room tour and collection video. So this collection belongs to me and my boyfriend, Will. We've both been gaming for pretty much our entire lives, although he is the bigger collector than I am. If it were up to me, I would probably own maybe a couple hundred games, just, you know, all the games I played as a kid or as a teenager, um, things that had special meaning to me or things that I want to play and review in the fairly near future. Uh, whereas Will is going for a couple complete sets of things and also just enjoys collecting as a hobby much more than I do. Uh, so because of this, the game collection changes quite a bit because there's always buying and selling and trading going on. Uh, but this is the current state of the collection. We'll start with just a little tour of the rooms the games are in. I don't really have a game room because I live in a small apartment, so there are just sort of games everywhere. Here it is. All right, so this is the living room where all of the games are kept along with a good number of the consoles. You can see here we've got our shelf with all of the Sega Saturn games, along with the Sega CD, and a few of the big box PS1 games in the bottom there. Uh, here's the entertainment center where most of the modern consoles are set up. You can see my capture card blinking in the distance there. We've got the PS4, Xbox One, Retron 5, Wii U, and the 360, though I hardly ever use the 360 here because there's another one in the bedroom. And since there's not quite enough room in the entertainment center, we've also got the PS2 and PS3 on a little side table here. Flipping around to the opposite side of the television, we've got the more modern games, so PS2 and Xbox and onward. And then the last two shelves here are a bit of a mishmash of things. There's the Genesis games, the PS1 games, the NES. Uh, there's also some handheld games, Saturn imports. And then at the bottom of the shelf, there are some Master System. Then there's a second gaming area. This is where my PC is, where I do all my editing and voiceover work while I use Will's computer in the other room to do the on-camera stuff. This area is where we've got the CRT set up with uh, some of the older systems. So we've got the XI here for Sega CD and Genesis, the Saturn, and the Dreamcast. This area is in a little bit of flux right now. Now let's get on to the games. We'll start at the beginning, for me at least, the NES. So you might notice that there are a lot less NES games than there once were in the backgrounds of my videos. We decided to pare them down to just the games we really wanted to play rather than going for a complete set because there's just so many. So here are some of the games that I remember playing or owning as a kid. Um, unfortunately, none of these are my original copies. I did get rid of them a few years ago, but have gotten most of them back now. Uh, Star Tropics was a particular favorite. I think that was the second retro review I ever did. And Felix was the first, because that was a favorite as well. Some of these aren't great, like uh, Hudson Hawk, Prince of Persia, and Home Alone in particular was one I never really liked. And now some new favorites, uh, some notable shoot 'em ups on the NES. The Guardian Legend and Gun Neck in particular are some of my favorite games on the system, and I just played them for the first time as an adult. Moving on to the Genesis, we actually own quite a lot of Genesis games, which is really more Will's doing than mine. Uh, he was a Sega kid growing up, whereas I wasn't really. Uh, there are a lot of really great games on the system though. I enjoy pretty much everything that I've played since we started collecting, and there are a number that I want to play and review in the future. The Genesis has a ton of good shooters, which is one of my favorite genres to play, especially on retro consoles. Uh, a lot of great stuff. Truxton, Twin Cobra, there's certainly no shortage of good games. 
Of course, other genres are well represented too, whether it's the run and gun of Gunstar Heroes or great beat em ups like Streets of Rage or Hyperstone Heist. Uh, there's also Splatterhouse, which is pretty rare and uh, from what I hear, pretty good, though I haven't had a chance to play it yet. Uh, there's a number of really good Genesis titles that I'd like to tackle in the future. Moving on to the Saturn. Uh, Will is going for a full set of Saturn games. I believe we've got about 150 of the games now uh, out of the North American releases of which I think there were 244. So we're a good ways there and have most of the heavy hitters. Though there aren't that many Saturn games, they're much more difficult to find than a number of the other systems. And then there's the Sega CD, which again is not a system I grew up with, but is one that I have come to love and appreciate. The Sega CD really fulfills my passion for really corny FMV games. There's a ton of them on the system. Also, one Saturn one, Double Switch, that you can see in there. I love seeing real actors in video games, like Double Switch has Corey Haim and Debbie Harry. Um, Wirehead is really cool and funny. I love Night Trap, I've done a video on that. And yeah, there's a number on the Sega CD that I would like to get around to playing and reviewing because I want to share my love of FMV games. Working Designs was one of the big developers on Sega and I believe we have all of the games that they put out. Uh, they're most known for JRPGs, though there are also some shooters and strategy games. Um, I have not played any of these myself, and I like them for a particularly superficial reason, and that is that they're very shiny. Ooh. They also have really nice game manuals. I miss game manuals. Another genre on the Sega CD that appeals to me is the visual novel adventure game. Snatcher is obviously a favorite, I've done a review and a full playthrough. Rise of the Dragon is Snatcher-like, and I hope to get to that one soon. And Monkey Island is just a great game on any console. Here's the Saturn imports, mostly shooters, all pretty rare. Uh, Turbo Graphics, along with the Vita and the DS. I don't really play handhelds very much, so I don't have much to say about those. The Turbo Graphics is a fairly new addition to the collection, and it's not a system I was overly familiar with, though from what I've seen so far, there's a lot of really solid games on it, and my next review will be one of them. Okay, getting more into my wheelhouse now with the PlayStation 1. So I've mentioned in other videos before that the PS1 is what really got me back into console gaming. I hadn't had a console since the NES and the PlayStation came along and I just needed one and it got me back on the couch with a controller in my hand. Where I belong. The PS1 is obviously a great place for JRPGs. I love a number of these games. The Final Fantasy 7 through 9 are actually my original games that I had from when I was a teenager. Star Ocean Second Story, Parasite Eve, Legend of Dragoon, those are favorites from the console as well. We've got a number of fairly rare games on the PS1. Uh, this is Fox Hunt, which is one of the most rare games on the system, though not one of the most expensive because it's supposed to be terrible. It's an FMV game that was critically panned and sold very few copies. Also, being a giant fan of XCOM, I picked up XCOM UFO Defense on PlayStation. It's generally more well-known on PC, though I find that for strategy games, these actually handle really well on console. And then there is Kadelka, which is the precursor to the Shadow Heart series, which is one of my favorite series on the PlayStation 2. Uh, this one is a sort of horror RPG. And now moving on to the PS2, which I love and could be my favorite system of all time, depending on what day you ask me. There's a ton of really great games on this system. The PS2 is a real standout for survival horror. There are a lot of great ones on the system. Uh, Obscure is really fun, sort of a teen horror movie where you can play with a friend. Um, Fatal Frames are obviously great, Silent Hill 2. 
Uh, this one here, Echo Night Beyond, I had never heard of this before and I just saw it for the first time in a shop and had to pick it up because it combines space and horror. It's also by From Software, who did Dark Souls, and while that's not my cup of tea, I know they do solid work. Fatal Frame 2 is probably my most favorite survival horror. PS2 is also great for JRPGs. Uh, Final Fantasy X and X-2 are a couple of my favorites that I've been replaying lately in the remastered versions. And Shadow Hearts is probably my favorite JRPG series of all. Covenant was the first one I played and then I tracked down the first game, which has become quite rare. Persona games are also really popular, though I haven't had a chance to get into them much. There's also a number of standout action-adventure titles on the PS2. Beyond Good and Evil and Shadow of the Colossus are two of my favorites. God of War is always fun, and Okami is one that I still need to finish. And now on to the 360. On the days when I won't answer the favorite console question with PS2, the answer would be the 360. So many good games came out over its life cycle, and it's still one of the systems that I play the most today. The collection's much smaller for Xbox One, PS3, PS4, Wii, Wii U, and original Xbox. One of the downsides of the 360 is a lack of RPGs, especially Japanese RPGs. Though it does have Dragon Age and Mass Effect, which are two of my favorite series, great western RPGs by Bioware, there's not a whole lot of representation for the JRPGs. The only one that I actually found on this system that I found was worth playing was Lost Odyssey, which is actually a really great game and I would love to see more games like it. Though I haven't found a ton in the way of survival horror, there are a number of semi-scary games. You can tell they're supposed to be scary by the fact that they all contain the word dead. Uh, dead Space is the only one I think was actually scary. Deadly Premonition is a great cult classic, and I also really like the Dead Rising series. And these games don't really have a theme, there are just some other standout titles on the 360 for me. XCOM, which I mentioned before, Spec Ops The Line, which is sort of a subversive military shooter. Uh, Saints Row is a hilarious series, at least in the later games. Deadpool's funny too, and Arkham Asylum is the best of the Batman games to me. And lastly, here is a look at the most rare and expensive games we have on each system. A lot of good stuff here. Rule of Rose is one of the most expensive games on the PlayStation 2. Musha and the Punisher are particularly rare on Genesis. Um, as far as the Saturn imports go, they're all pretty rare and expensive. Einhander is the only shoot 'em up on the PlayStation 1. Uh, Gun Neck on NES, you notice that I don't have any of the super rare ones anymore like Flintstones or Panic Restaurant, those all got traded away some time ago. KO Flying Squadron on the Sega CD is one of the most expensive mediocre games I've ever played. And on Saturn, Burning Rangers, Mega Man 8, Bomberman, and Panzer Dragoon Sega are all pretty heavy hitters. So that's it. I hope you liked this tour of my game collection. If you are more interested in the collecting aspects, I suggest you follow Will on Instagram. He posts pictures of the collection, um, pictures of pickups, things that are available for trade. His name on there is WattsWC underscore VG. I'll also add a link to it in the description. Um, thank you for watching. Thank you for 2,500 subscribers, and I'll see you next time.